Hello and welcome to Town Meeting TV. Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Bobby Lucier, and today's program will be focused on the Age Strong Vermont program, uh, a roadmap for uh, an age friendly state. And to talk a little bit more about the new plan that has been released uh, for Age Strong Vermont, we're joined by um, Rhonda Williams and Angela Smith Jang. Thank you both so much for joining us to talk a little bit about this plan today. Thank you for having us. Yes. Awesome. So um, before we jump into the plan, I think um, if both of you could just introduce yourselves, what your role is at Age Strong Vermont in, in, in um, state government and um, how this plan came about. But we'll start with um, just an introduction. Angela, if you want to go first. Sure. I'm Angela smith Jang. I'm the Adult Services Division Director at the Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living. And um, my role is to oversee um, our home and community-based long-term care programs that are both for older Vermonters and for Vermonters with physical disabilities. So we, our goal is, and our mission at Dale, mm -hmm. is to make Vermont the best place to grow old or live with a disability, dignity, respect, and independence. And so we work with a team um, across Vermont to help support Vermonters to do that. Awesome. Okay, Rhonda? Yes, um, thank you for this opportunity. Rhonda Williams, Vermont Department of Health, and I'm the Chief of the Chronic Disease Prevention. And so some of our work really centers around prevention, prevention of chronic disease for all Vermonters. And so part of my role is as Director of the Tobacco um, Program for the state as a major cause of disability, morbidity, and premature death and also to improve respiratory health. Um, and just lastly, but not leastly certainly, is our state has been uh, recently funded in the last five years to advance a public health directive for Alzheimer's, dementias, and healthy aging and brain health. So this work around Age Strong Vermont really ties in well with our mission at the health department to create the healthiest state for all Vermonters to to age to age well. Awesome. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about what Age Strong Vermont is? So you're both involved in your capacities as um, leaders in state government, and I understand there are other folks also involved that that contributed to this plan. But how did this program kind of come about? I don't know if you, if one of you wants to. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so it really stems from the Older Vermonters Act, which was legislation that passed in the state in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and the Older Vermonters Act set out a set of principles to guide state government um, around supporting aging well. Um, and it called on the state to create an action plan for aging well, um, to put forward a, a proposal for how to do that and then to create that type of a plan. So that was 2020, three years ago. Gotcha. Um, and since then, um, the health department and the Department of Disabilities, Aging and Independent Living took the lead together in um, launching that work and brought together a lot of um, um, individuals and organizations from other state agencies as well as community partners doing work across a range of sectors, uh, bringing, bringing people together to start to develop this this plan. Awesome, yeah, and and so are are you both members of the steering committee for the plan? How yeah, so and how many other folks are are there on that committee? Yeah, yeah. So we have a we have a large advisory committee right. um, of approximately thirty five um, different organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, and including older Vermonters and, and family caregivers are part of that advisory committee. Um, so they've been really kind of providing a lot of good guidance for the development of the plan. And then we have a smaller steering committee that um, has been really you know, doing a lot of the behind the scenes work to keep the plan uh, under development and moving along. And that includes, um, in addition to the health department and, and Dale, it also includes the Community of Vermont Elders, also known as COVE, Vermont Association of Area Agencies on Aging, and AARP of Vermont. Right, okay. Do you wanna add Yeah, anything? I just wanna say that the advisory committee has been meeting frequently, every two months. 
And I think one of the unique um, aspects of it has been bringing data that um, supports and um, allows for discussion and questioning around the principles of aging um, brought forth by the legislature in 2020, as Angela mentioned. And that's been such a great learning experience, um, I think, for the advisory committee. But as importantly is then really informing um, content going into the plan and taking um, the draft, uh, draft plan as it developed to different um, communities to discuss and gain feedback. And we're still in that process, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So this plan was released November 1st, is that right? That's right. Congratulations, <laughs> just a few days ago. Um, so there are <clears throat> already, you know, sort of action plans in place, you know, Vermont has a state plan on aging, a state health improvement plan, a state action plan on Alzheimer's related dementia and healthy aging, and there are other plans in place. So what's the value of this particular plan and how it interacts with all of those other plans that are in, that are already in place to move our state forward. Yeah. All of those plans are really important mm -hmm. and have a particular focus. Mm -hmm. um, the reason Age Strong Vermont is different and, and unique and really new to our state is that it's taking a visionary approach, looking out 10 years, and a multi-sector approach. So it's not talking just about what are the services that are needed to support aging, but really looking at aging across the lifespan and the fact that it touches all aspects of life, right? So it's putting our goals and objectives related to health and wellness side by side with housing and transportation and social connection and family caregivers because it's all interconnected, usually these things are done in separately, right? In, um, and that can lead to siloed work um, and not necessarily maximizing the resources that we have um, to really keep us on that vision. Um, so this plan, um, it's been great in that it's brought together all the voices from all those different sectors to um, really to, to come together with a common goal. And I, I think it's been a really valuable experience and I'm looking forward to the next phase of implementation. Mm -hmm. I think it's impressive to me to, to and, and you can find the plan at, I think it's healthvermont.gov slash agestrongvt. That's where mm -hmm. you can go and find this plan. And there are some really specific data-driven objectives that you all have, have set out to influence, to move the needle on some of these issues. Um, do you want to talk about, you know, there, there are a lot of them. There were like <laughs> a few dozen. Um, I don't know if they're, I mean, they kind of fall into these broader categories, but do you want to talk about just some of those specific uh, objectives that you're trying to move forward with this plan? I would uh, say that it's a combination of being aspirational and also taking into accountability. And how do we, how do we make ourselves accountable is through being specific. Um, and so most of our principles are supported by very specific objectives and then strategies for achieving those objectives. Our plan is that this next year we'll develop a dashboard. Um, I think our plan is within the first six months to take the um, data from each of the principles of the plan and select those that um, at least at least are measurable, but also matter, because we want to um, show that over time and within ten years that we are creating impact together. And a dashboard allows for any Vermonter to go and see how that how that is coming along. Um, so, in health and optimal wellness. Um, some of the measures include improving mental health. Um, other measures um, and a lot of discussion around making accessible um, physical activity, healthy and affordable nutrition, um, and safe um, sidewalks, more sidewalks, and safer sidewalks. 
So those are just a couple examples from one of the sections of the plan. But then those also relate, like how can you have physical, mental, and emotional health with also having financial stability? Or um, being able to feel engaged and also included in society. And so I think one of the um, main discussion points or threads throughout our planning has been that we together can combat and overcome some of the ageism that we see reflected, unfortunately, in employment practices or reflected in lack of um, cultural um, events that are oriented towards those who are older in transportation that can help um, for people to feel, no matter your age, that you have access to the very strengths and wonderful aspects of our state um, all through your aging. Yeah. Are there, uh, you, you already mentioned this a little bit, but I think this, it, it is, it does speak loudly in the plan that there's a desire to combat ageism throughout um, Vermont's systems and culture. Can you speak a little bit more to how that, how ageism shows up in our culture, in the ways that we plan for our society? You mentioned a couple of, but are there mm -hmm. any other things that come to mind? Gosh, I mean, I think yeah. we're bombarded with ageist messages all the time in our culture, in in um, the, in media and social media. Um, just you know, our culture is very youth oriented, right? And so, um, think about the jokes that you hear about growing older, um, having a senior moment. All of those types of things are. Um, contributing to ageism because it impacts how we how we think how we feel and how we act right and then we know that ageism shows up um, in employment in age discrimination one of the objectives of the plan is to really be able to increase the opportunities for employment for older older adults who want to work or need to work to really um, capitalize on the wisdom and skill of our older workforce um, versus um, forcing people into retirement if they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, ageism can show up, you know, so through through um, institutional practices, um, thinking about in, in a healthcare delivery system where older adults, you know, um, may complain of pain and people, oh, that's just part of aging. You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. versus really working with that individual to address their pain. Mm -hmm. um, as one example, it can be over prescribing or under prescribing mm -hmm. medications. Um, and then when you think about resources and resource allocation um, in a state budget, for example, right, looking at um, the, the concept of, of health prevention, health promotion and disease prevention. Um, they're you know, making sure that we're allocating resources across the spectrum of populations, right? right? As a state that's aging, where one in three of us will mm -hmm. be over the age of 60 by 2030, um, we need to ensure that resources are allocated in a way that supports all of us to age well and doesn't leave anyone behind. So one of the practices that we're changing at the health department is how we are analyzing and sharing our data. Um, before our um, plan really um, got underway, it was pointed out to us, it's like, why does the data stop at age 65? Um, where we had bracketed the data in, in these 15-year age groups up into age 65 great question. And so in looking at that and seeing what we could do to make more data available across demographics, across health conditions, in so many different ways that we use data to understand how well we are doing in Vermont. And now we um, are able going, we're going to be sharing data that is more inclusive um, for older Vermonters. Absolutely. So as one small example. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It sounds like you've laid out. There's a lot of work to do to combat the ageism in our state and to um, create a, a, an environment and a culture where folks can um, age with dignity. Um, it might be helpful to understand, you know, what is our state doing well in supporting our aging population? You know, are there any 
kind of wins that we can say like, okay, we're actually doing this pretty well, and then this is where we need to focus, or is it kind of just we need to be improving everywhere <laughs> in everything that we're doing? Um, so that's a big question. Yeah. Um, and I will say if, if folks are interested in learning more about what we learned from Vermonters themselves, because in, in leading up to the development of the plan, one of the first things we did was kind of a needs assessment. What's working well, what's not working well. And we asked Vermonters a lot of questions. We did a, a big survey around aging. Um, we did public listening sessions across the state and then focus groups with individual um, communities and learned a lot from, from folks. Um, in addition, we looked at all of the data that we have around programs and services and, and population measures around how are we doing. Um, I can say from the work that I do at Dale, um, Vermont has been a leader in terms of offering um, choices as people get older in ter for their care um, for many years. So Vermont typically ranks in the, in the top third of the, the country around access to long-term care options um, and choices and um, being able to support many people to age in place, to be able to receive supports in their own home as if they want, if they want to continue living there. Um, that has become more challenging over the years with our workforce challenges statewide, right? So um, making sure that we have a really robust uh, workforce of people who can provide those services is a key focus at, at, at my department right now. And I would say the strengths also include the strong history of really valuable work in early, right? The early stages of life, those first years and setting um, high standards and sets of services, including um, nurse home visiting, um, partnerships, um, other types of programming that um, supply some of those foundational, foundational pieces um, early in life. But we also, as Angela mentioned, need to look at the resource allocation and some of the evidence base for older um, residents and what do those look like. Um, so there is work underway around, um, and you had mentioned it before we started, of a farm to plate. Well, farm to plate, farm to school, all white, wonderful work. And now there's farm to institution and farm to congregation. And um, increasing the access to healthy and affordable um, nutrition is so important to continuing um, not only living well but also offsetting chronic disease and the impact that so many people experience from chronic disease in their in their older years. So I do think we have a strong foundation early in life and that overall Vermont does rank well in health among older residents. However, w there are um, health inequities. And so when you look at the data closer, you see that those who are black, indigenous, and people of color, those who are low income, those who are very rural, those with disabilities, that we as um, a set of stakeholders, as whether you're in government, whether you're in organizational, business, um, non-governmental work is we have an obligation and responsibility to close those gaps. And so the plan is um, really geared and really taking seriously, I think, that aging strong is aging strong for everyone. And as more data becomes available and looking at our populations in Vermont, bringing that data to um, more listening sessions um, and more um, opportunities for input from Vermonters just to, to share. Yeah. Are, are they improving too? Are we all improving? So, Can I just piggyback on one thing that Rhonda said when um, she was talking about how we all have a role to play in this? That's, I think, another piece that's uh, really unique in this plan is that it really is an all-hands-on-deck type of plan. 
um, we are not going to accomplish the goals in Age Strong Vermont just as state government. Mm -hmm. It really, we really need the um, you know businesses, communities, local town government, um, local organizations, and volunteers and individuals to be really be a part of a part of the work and a part of the solution to accomplish these goals. And that's also where I think there is a lot of strength in Vermont. We have really um, sort of strong local organizations that have stepped up to fill gaps um, and to support aging well in different ways. So there's good innovation happening mm -hmm. all across the state. Can it, the question is, can we lift those up and be able to replicate and, and you know, create them across, across all counties, for example? Mm -hmm. yeah. You talked. You both mentioned um, resource allocation and how resources are divided in our state to support different populations. You know, there's, it's an ambitious plan with lots of goals that will require um, some resources, including you know, like one of the. I think one of the first very concrete um, <clears throat> uh, objectives is to increase income for um, you know for uh, aging folks. So. Um, how are you thinking about mobilizing resources? Like, are the resources, you know, was Act, Act 156, um, did that unlock resources for some of this work? Is there, you know, where, where do the resources have to come from? And I imagine it's a combination of, you know, from uh, local uh, businesses and state government, but how are you thinking about the mobilizing the resources necessary to get this work done? I think you're right that, Act 156, while it didn't unleash funds specifically, it did allow for um, personnel like ourselves to dedicate time and thought and action towards this um, comprehensive topic. So that is a type of resource. And along the way, then we've uh, and continue to explore um, different types of resources, including philanthropic support, and we gained philanthropic support from the Vermont Community Foundation for evaluation and integrating evaluation from the start. Um, we are looking at, over time, exploring policies because policy and building in policy that, especially through a health equity lens, is a form of very significant support. Um, and, and you, you see that um, sprinkled throughout the plan are a call for or explore a need for um, policy and budget related action. Now, none of it is certainly guaranteed, but it is laid out specifically um, and we intend to hold ourselves to that as a collective through um, an implementation uh, committee. And the implementation committee um, really helping to cement what are the next steps as we undertake each of these areas of the plan and adjusting as we need to to be as successful as possible. Right. And you know because it's a it's a it's a ten year plan. Um, you know some of some of the strategies outlined in the plan don't take a lot of funding resources. Take a lot of people resources. Right. And so. We can start working with those while also working towards, um, you know, towards the goal of policy change or funding support um, over time. You know, I think one of the one of my hopes for the plan as well is that it, it's not only um, a plan to guide the guide our work, but also to guide policy making into the future and mm -hmm. and. Um, and budget making into the future. So it can be a kind of a guidepost or a roadmap, if you will, for, um, for um, those making those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, they can see does, you know, here's this funding request coming to us. Does this align with the goals in Age Strong Vermont? Is it going to help get us down, further down that road um, or put a barrier up on that road? Um, and then as we're looking at opportunities to apply for federal funding for new grant uh, new grants that may be coming down the pike instead of having to question oh um, does this you know does this fit in with our work we already know if it does or it doesn't because it's mm -hmm. outlined for us in that plan and we can use that as a foundation for um, for seeking additional support over time right uh, it might be too early to 
to say, but in terms of this upcoming state legislative session, is there anything on this plan's radar as far as, you know, is, are, there any, is, are there any pieces of legislation that might be, that might impact your work at all or that you're hoping to steer with this plan? I'm aware of one. Um, and I'm sure there's more. <laughs> uh, but just in the last couple of weeks, uh, the Alzheimer's Association nationally and then in state chapters, they assess and analyze what are policies that are going to advance um, either on a prevention side, in, you know, improving brain health, or improving and delivering services to those uh, those already impacted by a neurodegenerative disease or their caregiver care partner. Um, and what we have heard is um, taking some of what CDC is uh, funding for the health department and putting that into statute so that it sustains itself. Um, and that really is the intent of our work in this plan is um, that over time, by integrating into the considerations for um, aging strong into policy, into budgets, into work plans, into personnel um, descriptions, is that we are building in sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have just a few minutes left. Um, how can folks get involved in the work that you're doing and this plan, I saw that there's maybe a link for providing feedback to the plan, or so how, how can folks get involved? Right, so in the immediate, in the immediate future, or right now, um, we're in the public comment phase for the plan, so the month of November, and people can go online, read the plan, there's a link to be able to provide feedback. Um, so that is probably the most immediate ask that we have. We absolutely welcome um, welcome feedback and ideas, questions. Is there anything missing in the plan? Um, people should be welcome to share um, as much as they would like. Um, and then as we head forward towards 2024 and implementation, um, the question is how do people want to be involved? Certainly we want this to be a living, breathing document that's evolving and growing as over time. So we'll need um, our implementation committees to kind of move the different pieces along and keep us accountable to that. Um, but then if people have ideas around you know, something that they want to implement in their community that connects to Age Strong, we'd love to hear about that too and see how we can support those efforts. Right, so the public are invited to attend meetings to provide their input that way or to email us. There's contact information on the website. Um, we really intend to also go out into the community um, and just have different modalities so that people can give their input and their ideas and um, we hope be involved with us. Awesome. Yeah, Rhonda and Angela, thank you so much for coming in to talk about this plan and congratulations on getting the, the first version of it out there into the world and um, thank you for coming in today. Thank, thank you, you so you. much for having us. Yes. yes. And thank you for tuning in to Town Meeting TV. You can watch this program and many more at ch17.tv. So long.